Professor Dave and Chegg here. If we want to know how much heat is absorbed or released in a chemical reaction, we can physically do the reaction in a calorimeter. Or there are ways that we can calculate this mathematically without having to do the reaction. This is often preferable if the amount of heat released is dangerously large or impractical to measure. One way to do such a calculation is to use Hess's law. A summary of Hess's law tells us that the change in enthalpy for a chemical reaction is a state function, or independent of the pathway. That means that if we can rewrite a chemical equation that has an unknown enthalpy change as the sum of several other chemical reactions with known enthalpy changes, then the sum of the enthalpy changes of those reactions will be the enthalpy change for the reaction in question. This concept is best demonstrated by example, so let's see what this means. Let's say we want to know the enthalpy of formation for FeCl3, which means the energy associated with the generation of one mole of this compound from its constituent elements. But we only have the following enthalpy data, which tells us the enthalpy of forming FeCl2, which then forms FeCl3. We can make use of these equations by adding them together, because if we combine them, FeCl2 will cancel out. One mole plus a half a mole of Cl2 will give us three halves moles of Cl2, and we end up with the reaction in question. Because we added these reactions together, we simply add up their delta H's, and we get negative 399.5 kilojoules, which must therefore be the enthalpy of formation for FeCl3. Now, it won't always be as easy as just adding two equations together. Sometimes we need to manipulate them first. So let's understand some rules. First, if we have a chemical equation and we multiply or divide the stoichiometric coefficients by some number, we must multiply or divide the corresponding delta H by that same number. Look at this case, involving the formation of water. We can double the coefficients, but we must therefore double the delta H. We also could have multiplied by 3, cut in half, whatever we like, as long as we change the delta H in the same way. And second, if we reverse the direction of an equation by swapping reactants and products, such as we do here by making water the reactant and the gases the products, we must reverse the sign of the corresponding delta H, in this case from negative to positive, to show that energy released in one direction is energy absorbed in the other. Let's do another example. Say we want to find the delta H for this reaction involving the reaction of water and elemental carbon to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas, and we are given the following thermochemical data. Let's see how we need to manipulate the given information. To start, we see that this first equation has both carbon and carbon monoxide, but it has two of each. The equation in question has only one of each, so let's cut this one in half so that the coefficients are 1, one half and one, and we can cut the delta H in half as well. Now the second equation has hydrogen gas, but it has two of them, and it has it on the wrong side. We need it as a product, so let's cut it in half and reverse it, giving us this. And we must do the same to the delta H, which will now be half the original value and positive. And the third gives us liquid water on the left, so that one is actually fine just the way it is. We can add these all up and notice that oxygen gas and water vapor are present on both sides and will cancel out, leaving us with exactly what we are looking for. And adding up the respective delta H values, we get positive 175 kilojoules. Let's try just one more example that is a bit trickier. How can we find the change in enthalpy for the reaction in question given this data? First, we need ClF. Where can we find this substance below? It looks like the second equation has this substance as a reactant, but it has a coefficient of 2. So our first step will be to take this second equation and cut it in half. Don't be afraid of fractional coefficients for the other substances. Using one half is just fine. And don't forget to cut delta H in half as well, giving us 102.8 kilojoules. Next we have fluorine gas. Where can we find this amongst our given data? Well, it shows up in this first reaction, but it shows up as a product, and it has a coefficient of 2. This means we have to do two things. We have to flip the reaction so as to make fluorine a reactant, and we also have to cut it in half to get rid of this coefficient. So let's rewrite the equation the way we want it, with coefficients 1 half, 1, and 1, and then we do the same to delta H, which will be half the original magnitude, and will also be positive instead of negative, since we flipped it, so we get 24.7 kilojoules. Lastly, we need ClF3. Where can we find this in our given data? Well, this is found in the third equation, and it is a reactant with a coefficient of 1. So we don't need to multiply or divide, but we do need to flip it around so that this becomes a product. So let's rewrite this with the reactants as products and the products as reactants, without changing any coefficients. 
And then we simply take the delta H and we flip the sign, since we flip the equation. So positive 266.7 kilojoules becomes negative 266.7 kilojoules. And that's all we need from our given information. We can now just cancel out all the terms that are able to cancel and then add all the equations together. Now on the left we have 1 half O2 in the first equation and 1 half O2 in the second equation for a total of 1 O2 on the left. We also have 1 O2 on the right, so those cancel out. We also have 1 half Cl2O on both sides, so that will cancel out. In addition, on the left, we have 3 halves OF2, while on the right, the first equation has 1 half OF2 and the second equation has OF2, which add up to 3 halves OF2, so those all cancel out as well. And we are left with precisely the substances we need to get the equation in question and in the right positions. So we simply add up the enthalpy data that corresponds to these reactions, and that will be our answer. So we just find 102.8 plus 24.7, plus negative 266.7, and we get negative 139.2 kilojoules. And this is the change in enthalpy for this reaction, which we derived using Hess's law. As we can see, once we get the hang of this algorithm down, Hess's law is easy to apply. It's just about finding the substances we need and manipulating the given information in whatever way necessary to get the reaction we need. Professor Dave Furchegg, see you next time.